Well, Brandon, coming to you this week from Owners Acres here in Aurora. And uh, unfortunately, we have a couple topics uh, to discuss today that I uh, hoped we wouldn't have to bring up this year. But uh, this weekend was pretty rough. Uh, a lot of wind. Uh, you get right south of Aurora here, and it, it was really hard hit. And our hearts, uh, thoughts go out to those guys. Uh, they really got, got hammered this week. There's a lot of widespread uh, damage, um, but there's some areas that definitely got hit uh, significantly harder. Uh, we think about the property loss, uh, pivots, uh, grain bins and stuff. And, and guys, if there's anything we can do for you, please call us, let us know uh, first and foremost. That's, that's our main concern here. Um, as far as crops go, uh, we'll start off with soybeans here, then we'll walk into some corn. Uh, but you can see on, on soybeans here, we're moving right along. Um, you know, some of our beans are just starting to, to get some uh, uh, pod set. This is a little different maturity group bean here. Uh, a little fuller season, so we're still waiting on some, some pods. We've got a lot of flowering and, and small pods getting started here. Uh, moving into an earlier maturity bean, uh, you'll see we actually have some, some pods starting to fill here. Uh, pod's about halfway up, so we're still not officially kind of into that R3 stage where we see uh, some elongation towards the top. Uh, we're still flowering and growing, but uh, obviously on soybeans when we have some small pods, we're looking for any uh, beetles, insects that will clip pods. Uh, just talking about the importance, three pods per plant can be up to five bushel yield. So it doesn't take a lot, uh, a loss. Uh, so as you're doing those in, uh, fungicide treatments on your soybeans, make sure you throw that insecticide in if you have any, any bug pressure out there at all. We're still fighting Japanese beetles. Uh, we took them down for about a week. We're going to have to come back in here. Uh, probably here in a couple days when our corn starts to silk and we'll, we'll hit this field again. Uh, but great time to start thinking about those fungicide applications if you haven't already. As we get that R2, R3, we're starting to canopy rows, um, get that good coverage on the plant. Uh, we'll move into corn here. Uh, this is a topic we didn't want to have to bring up. Um, looking here, uh, a lot of what I'm seeing walking fields here the other day is, is what you see here. Uh, with a lot of lodging. You'll see we have anywhere from corn, uh, you know, leaning down at a 30 degree angle to 45 to uh, down here. You'll see we actually have a plant that broke at the crown. Uh, obviously, this one won't come back. Um, these I'm pretty confident in. You know, here they're just at the 30 degree angle. Uh, they'll work themselves back up. We don't have an ear on most of these plants yet, so we, you know, they'll be able to work their way back up. Uh, the real kicker will be some of these back here that we see you know, at that 45 degree angle, uh, you know, maybe even a little more aggressive to the ground at a 60 degree angle. Uh, they'll stand back up. Uh, they'll, they'll shoot some brace roots here and work their way back up, but obviously we'll get that gooseneck effect. Um, what I'm not seeing a lot of is a whole lot of green snap. Um, the green snap, a lot of what I've seen snapped off is, is above where we're gonna have our ear shoot. Uh, experience would tell us we'll still put on an ear uh, we'll have enough pollen out here as long as we're uh, under that 50% green snap, which, you know, as I walk this field, you know, 5 to 10%. Uh, seen some other hybrids maybe a little higher, but most of it was above uh, that ear node. So uh, we'll still put on an ear. It probably won't be as big of an ear. Um, you know, you think about detasseling a seed corn, you know, it's, it's okay to have some tops missing. Um, you just have to watch. And, and guys, the, the moral of the story here is it's just going to take some time. I know, uh, you know, emotions run high when you drive by fields. Uh, really, to make a fair evaluation, uh, we'll, we're, we're just going to have to wait here a couple weeks and see what we have. Um, obviously, you know, if, if we have snapped below, well, you know, say on this plant we snap below uh, where we anticipate our ear coming, um, then we've got a, a loss there. So it'll just take some time to sort this stuff out. Uh, like I say, because of the widespread issues, uh, I know your, your seed guys, your insurance guys, they're all going to be backed up. Uh, this went from far west to Kearney, uh, up north to Ravana, uh, as far as east as Omaha. Um, big area impacted. Um, some, like I say, are, are significantly worse driving around uh, where whole fields are flat. Um, hang in there, guys. Um, you know, we, we, we got to give it a few days. Um, obviously, see what, what comes back here. Uh, for us, you know, on, on here at Aurora, uh, we still feel like we have some pretty good potential, so we'll stay after it. But we've, we've obviously got some, some blocks, some, some management out here, uh, whether it be hybrid that's, that's you know, maybe a little worse than others. But all in all, we'll, we'll keep, keep pressing here. Um, the big things we're going to be looking at is as soon as we get tassels and silks out, 
Uh, we know we've got a lot of Japanese beetle. We're seeing a fair amount of rootworm beetle showing up. So we'll want to protect those silks. You know, losing uh, 30 kernels, you know, a couple rows at the top from, from western bean cutworm, uh, earworm to uh, losing a few kernels due to pollination issues. Again, it doesn't take long to add up to uh, 10, 12 bushels. So uh, we'll keep managing out here. We've got our fungicide on. Uh, you know, we're noticing a fair amount of leaves that, that have stripped and split here. Uh, again, we registered a 78 mile an hour wind on our weather station. Uh, obviously with winds like that, guys, we, we snap power poles, we blew buildings over. Um, you know, there isn't a, a plant or a, a hybrid in the world that's going to withstand that without some damage. So uh, we'll keep pushing. Uh, like I say, rootworm beetles are out. You should be able to evaluate your fields now. Western bean moth flights in, in a, you know, that peak. Uh, we saw a pretty good ramp up of, of them last week, so be scouting for egg masses. Uh, seeing some grasshopper activity. Again, if you're in a drier area, as those grasshoppers jump out and look for something green, maybe they were hanging in the road ditch. Uh, we all love you to shred your road ditches and mow them down, but that might force some pressure in fields. Uh, so those are, those are the three main insects. Disease-wise, we're still waiting to see any significant uh, flare-ups of disease, but this is a time where you know we'll start keeping an eye out for disease. But uh, we'll uh, keep you posted. Uh, wish everyone a good week. Again, if there's anything you need, please don't hesitate to reach out to us.